Hey everyone, today we'd like to go over um, sort of a development and this is something that uh, a lot of customers have asked uh, specifically about Victron integration and specifically the Serbo GX um, which is Victron's uh, essentially Raspberry Pi communications device and one of the things that people ask us often is like uh, we know you have a data port how do we get your data port to uh, talk to the servo and can it even work now um, we are working on a CAN bus based hub that will connect to the uh, CAN bus ports that's still in development but that does not mean that you can't use the servo GX and your Victron stuff um, as is so let's sort of begin of what all is involved and I'll start off explaining First, you'll need to configure your servo, make sure you can set it up, set up an IP address and, and so on and so forth. And here we have sort of our servo. It's set up on an IP address that we, uh, that our router assigned. And we can sort of see, you know, what is going on. Now, um, you don't need to enable SSH or um, various things that, may, that you may not be comfortable. It's a very simple process. Um, essentially, you'll go to our website, you'll need a small uh, USB flash drive. You will download the Victron Servo GX driver for our batteries and kits and simply install it here. And we'll have full instructions how to do that. But it's a small file you put in the main directory of the drive and make sure nothing else is in that drive. Okay, it's a tar.gzip file. All right, here we have an iPad. Let's go ahead and scan and see our batteries so that to make sure that they appear and we'll just sort of see the process on how it is so that you can uh, you know see that the the batteries are there and then we'll explain how this is done so we let's connect to our 300 hp batteries we'll connect to this one this one this one and this one so these are the four batteries we'll go ahead and connect those are the four batteries these are some customer batteries but in the meantime we figured, hey, we've got four batteries, let's kind of show how this all works. So we're gonna, it's gonna connect, and even though we don't actually have them connected, we're just gonna say they're four in parallel, and hit submit. And once it's there, it's gonna show um, all four batteries. Okay, so there you go, all four batteries. And, you know, they're about uh, what the charge that we would see when we were about to ship them. You know between somewhere between half and a, and a third so we see all four batteries are there everything is nice let's see what we need to do to get it to talk to the servo okay so as we said you'll download this driver you will install it onto a usb drive and now you'll notice that the servo has a few usb ports two of them are data and one of them is power so you want to choose either one or two okay and then simply insert it into the servo We'll choose this port, okay? And there's two ways to do it. You can either go to your console and reboot there, okay? So you can go to your settings and systems. I think it's in your system setup. Uh, well, I'm just gonna do the lazy way. Um, I'm just gonna unplug it and that's gonna reboot the device also now. Ideally, you're supposed to go in there, but we don't wanna make this video too, too long. Wait about five, 10 seconds, and basically plug it back in. Now, when you plug it back in, that driver that we installed, you'll see that the servo will start reading the USB drive and once it comes back on online, which is going to take a few, okay, see that the light is blinking and you'll see it's reading the USB drive. Now you're going to let it run for about, I would say a minute. And we'll go back to our monitoring screen. Have to hit refresh on it. It's going to wait for a second. Okay. Still waiting for a boot. 
like I said, it's going to take, give it about five, uh, you know, one, two, no more than five minutes it should be done. But once, once you're able to reconnect to your servo, okay. Okay, there it is. So now it's there. Okay, so that should be in the drivers installed. You can now go ahead. Now you're supposed to go into the servo and undock it. I'm just, again, I'm just pulling it out. And you'll see a warning. So the proper way to do it is actually to go into the uh, menu and hit eject. But, you know, I just pulled it out. So there you go. Okay, drivers now installed. Now let's get to the fun part. Okay, we're going to set up a battery. All right. Now, to do this, you'll need the SFK data cable. Okay. This is a data cable specifically built for our batteries that plugs into the data port and has a USB on the outside. Now, you can also use this to get data from your PC if you needed to. But in our case, we're not going to be using that to talk to the servo. Okay, so we'll take the data cable from one of our batteries, and it's a pretty long cable, so you can have a long run if you need to, all right? And we're going to plug it to one of the two data ports. As we said, one and two are data ports, so we'll plug into one of those. All right, now, what's going to happen here is in a few seconds, you should see our battery is now appearing. It's appearing as SFK bat one. Pretty cool. All right. We can see it's got 35% state of charge, 13.14 volts, and it's not doing any sort of discharge, so the amp hours are zero. But if we go further in, we can see uh, state of charge, what the temperatures are, you know, how many sort of are consumed. And this will recalibrate as, as things go but you can also get more data, like you can go to details and get the case temperature, BMS temp, so on and so forth. And basically other sort of information that's optimized for the Victron system. Now, this driver is based on the work by Louis van der Valt and also, I believe, Mr. Manuel. They've done a really good job. Uh, it's written in Python. I'm not the best Python developer. I, you know, I'm a C sharp, uh, C plus plus, or, or C kind of guy, but I do appreciate that what they have done since the you know Linux has a Python library on there. It's a very slick, easy to sort of update. Okay, so and we'll be publishing more details on how this sort of works. But essentially, you have the information that the Victron equipment needs to get battery data, temperature, state of charge. And we also have some controls on like how to charge the battery up, how to discharge the battery. There's some uh, things that are sort of optimized for our battery. Okay, so that's how you install one battery. Good, but we all know people have more than one battery. So what do you do if you have multiple batteries? Okay, now there are two ports on the servo, so you could put up to two of them connected directly to it. And that will give you two batteries. But again, people have multiple batteries. So for that, we can get a basic sort of USB hub. It doesn't have to be a powered USB hub. It can just sort of be a basic USB hub. And you can see we've connected the three batteries there. We're actually going to disconnect this battery here and also connect it to this hub. So we'll have four. Give me a second. All right, we've connected our four batteries to our hub. And let's see what the system will do. So we see it has the one, it recognized that one battery that we had in there. But now, as you can see, it's starting to recognize more. Now we see battery one, two, three, and four. We have the state of charge of each battery, and we also see the voltages and amps. So essentially, by using a, just a standard non-powered USB hub, we are now able to extend, instead of just having two with the basic hub, we can have up to four. Now, our driver currently is optimized to handle up to, uh, up to eight batteries. Um, if you need more than that, we'll have to see. Uh, but in most cases, I believe four batteries should be sufficient, and you can get the data in here for here. Now, um, again, 
some of this information will explain more in details, but you can go into here and see some sort of IO and some settings. And what that sort of does is you can decide if you want the uh, servo to handle different things such as allow to charge and allow not to charge. So, um, and you can get device information. Like it will say that these are 300 HP batteries. It will auto assign the name for them. So that will be there. Um, so, you know, you'll have that type of uh, information. And um, there's certain parameters that you can set. You can set up if what sort of charge mode it is. Like we've set it to 14 volts as its peak. Um, you can go to 14 poor, but 14 should be sufficient. And what this will sort of do is some of the, some of the things that we have set as a default. For example, we've you know we have set a 140 volt amp discharge limit per battery. And if you need more, let us know. But in our situation, we don't really see anyone really actually using this. Um, anyone in an inverter situation is usually going to have multiple batteries. So it's 140 per battery. So if you've got two batteries, that means 280. But again, this can be configured. However, we are sort of basing it on real world scenarios. Um, the same way we're limiting 70 amps per battery. And that sort of gives us universal capability between all of our battery types, the, the two, from 260 all the way to 300 HP. Uh, not all of our batteries are capable of doing more. So for now, in this version, we're just limiting uh, maximum to 240. But um, there'll be more information available. But initially, like I said, this driver should be available on our website fairly soon. And when this is out, you should be able to, um, like I you know, get this information and have it ready. And then sort of what this is going to allow you to do is just sort of monitor your batteries and, uh, uh, you know, it's a very simple process. All you need is a USB flash drive, a Windows computer, or even a Mac that can write to it, download the driver, install it, and you'll be good to go. And you can see, you know, that it's essentially mirroring what we have here. Now, it's not going to show the decimal points, so it's just going to say 42, 43. It'll round it up. So if it's 34.58, it's going to show up as a 35. And if it's 33.72, you know, it'll show up as 34%. But enough to sort of get, you know, get you guys to where you need to be. And like I said, just check back on our website. This should be available uh, tomorrow. Um, but again, you will need the SunFun Kits data cable. And these are not going to be too expensive. They're about $30 or so. But with coupons, it might be less. You'll need one battery, uh, one cable per battery. So if you have two batteries, you'll need two cables. If you've got three batteries, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, anyway, hopefully that helps. I know a lot of people have asked, been asking for it. You know, where when is this going to be available? Um, so if you bought the battery or the kit with the, with the data port, um, now you'll be able to communicate with the Victron equipment and the, you know, Servo. And it does require the Servo GX. You, you can't communicate without it. So as long as you have a Servo GX, you'll be able to get this information. And then your charge controllers and other stuff can base their profile based on what they're seeing, how the batteries is acting. Okay. And also, uh, apparently, American Boat and Yacht Club are acquiring this. So this also will make it uh, easier for you to meet those requirements. All right. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, we'll, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, and we'll take it from there.